Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. This is the last part in the ground source heating job that we're on. In today's video, we're gonna be commissioning the underfloor heating, installing the shower replacement for the digital shower that we removed, and also just make sure everything is operational. Um, we've had a couple of TV problems with doing the switching over to mains pressure, so we've got to replace a ball valve in the toilet. And in general, just gonna make sure everything's operational and the customer's all happy. So yeah, let's get on with it. So you can see now all the pipe runs that we installed at high level running through this new extension are now all lagged. So it's important that we lagged all this pipe work because the temperature of the water coming in from the ground source heating is quite low. So we need to retain as much heat as possible. You can see here, everything's all nice and lagged all the way through and down. So last time we were here, we added some isolation valves and now we've just put the AAVs on. So some of the pipe work routes because of the type of building it is a little bit awkward and we're getting a few airlocks. So this has just eradicated that now and we're getting heat pretty much balanced everywhere throughout the property, which is great. So one of the main issues you have when you go over from low pressure to high pressure is some of the old components can fail. So on this toilet the ball valve actually failed and it was flying out of the overflow so um, we just sorted that, fitted a new one and yeah hopefully that'll be the last of the teething problems. So this is the refurbished and altered digital shower pump that we installed so originally this was a gravity fed digital shower and now it's mains pressure so the customer managed to send it away and have it altered and what they did was, because we were actually missing the pumping station, they just send you out this like, little bit of pipe and adapter, so we re plumb back in. And yeah, it's working absolutely fine, so that's great. I didn't realise they offered that kind of service with these, so pretty impressed with that. It's all operational now, which is great. Okay, so now the electrician's been, we can check the correct operation of our hot water recirculation pump. So normally what we do is we put it on a timer. So the reason for this is if you've just got it constantly running all the time, you're just gonna be wasting energy. So when the customer's actually using the hot water, they can set it to come on uh, just before. So generally in the morning and also in the evenings when you're gonna be using the shower. So this hot water recirculation loop it actually it runs along here but it tees in over here up in this corner and then back again so the reason we did that is in the existing building the plumbing is like a hodgepodge of push fit and compression fitting so it wasn't suitable for hot water recirculation so it's almost as if the hot water cylinder is located in the corner of this house so which is great and means that the hot water draw off time is minimal uh, because otherwise it would be coming from all the way over here in that barn so the hot water cylinder is located over there and what we're technically doing is we're just pumping it round from that corner over there and then all the way back and forth again just in a big loop and that just gives our hot water draw off time uh, or makes it a lot quicker. So I'm just getting the underfloor heating up and running now and I've just turned on these um, isolation valves so flow and return. One thing you might notice is because it's a ground source heat pump, the actual manifold doesn't include its own pump to circulate around. Everything is controlled via this one pump. So that's the radiators and the underfloor heating. So um, this pump here is generally found more in light commercial um, instances but the reason we've gone for this is because it self adapts, so it will adapt the flow of speed uh, depending on the situation. So it's got a lot of information, a lot of different settings on this pump and you can bore yourself to death with it, but we will put it into an auto adapt mode when we finish commissioning and that will um, suit everything totally fine. So when commissioning the underfloor heating, you need to check the paperwork that you would have been given with the underfloor heating design. So you can see on here, we've got the flow rate in liters per minute through the manifold, and that's indicated to each zone here. 
So what I'm doing is I'm just setting the flow rate liters per minute on these flow dials here. Inside you can see you've got the red plunger which indicates where you've got it set and also the numbers which are going up and down on the flow dials. So by turning this wheel, I can get it set to the right flow. Which on this one I believe is 1.6. Oh yeah, about right. Okay, so because we've got cast iron radiators, I just wanted to double check the filter again, make sure we haven't got any build up of any metals or sludge and debris inside the filter. But it was all good, topped up the inhibitor. So yeah, everything's all operational, it's all good to go. So the only thing really is the ground source heat pump, it's not really getting that hot, which is a bit of a letdown. But um, I suppose that's part of the parcel with it. But Everything on our side is all great, it's all good. So we are obviously still waiting for all the decorating to be done in here so we can fit this kitchen sink, but um, that'll only take an hour or so. So yeah, happy with how this job's gone and we are just about to go round the corner to our next big job.